So, okay, so those arts really, uh, like after years of looking into them, where, where do they come from? What is the source? They, like, did, was it like some uh, farmers in China working all day long and then they were like, oh, my back is achy and I, if I do this exercise, I will get, make my chi work and I will feel better. I don't think so. Like the, the real source of all those comes from deep spiritual arts that comes from long, long time ago. So the, the origin is very potent. So that, 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 that I have found that the Qigong arts and the energy arts of Asia, the origin is quite spiritual. But over time, they've uh, developed medicinal and martial and just like lifestyle and different purposes to, to, to do different exercises. And in China the, or in Asia, there's thousands and thousands of different forms and styles. But what is commonly known these days is Qigong and Tai Chi, and they get often confused. So Qigong would be, these days, would be your mm, mind, body, breath, unified in movement. So you do a movement where your mind is in your body and you um, really work with your breath as well. So your breath, your mind and your body is lined up and maybe you do a standing posture or seated posture or movement and that will cultivate a sense of uh, well-being. It will make your chi or your energy flow and it's good for your health. So that's maybe like your standard qigong and most people would practice um, maybe for well-being, maybe for medicinal purposes, or maybe they're just interested in these arts. That, that's your vast majority. So that's the Qigong. Interesting enough, Qigong as a word was coined by the Communist Party in China in 1950s. They were, in China, when the, when the Communists came to power in 1949, they had a big problem. They basically had a big country to run and a lot of sick people and not enough Western trained doctors. So they were looking for ways to... Um, cheap ways to effective ways to cure people to make people healthy to keep them healthy and then one thing led to another and they discovered that these exercises that have been used in buddhist and taoist temples some of those exercises have a great benefit and uh, for for common people so they stripped away anything that was sort of religious or spiritual and they kept the more simple routines and more physical body and focusing on the health on mind and body disregard the spirit that was the thing and they thought oh what do we call this stuff and then they said oh we call it qigong mm -hmm. so that qigong that is actually where it comes from interesting enough people think it's this um, asian spiritual art it actually comes from ch communists <laughs> wow. but the root is a lot deeper and yeah. is in spirituality yeah right. so maybe and i would just add that qi means energy and gong means it's often translated as work but it's more of a cultivation or practice of something until it becomes a quality within you or a really deep skill. So qigong is energy cultivation. Can you practice them as like a, a physical activity, like for people wanting to keep fit, let's say, or would you recommend people who are coming from a different door let's say looking for something else is it just a good thing to keep it active i think it's something that should be taught in schools because the foundation of the principle is your mind your body and your uh, is in you your mind is in your body and you become calm and centered and then you uh, really work with your breath you calm your breath so these are all foundations that that's universal <laughs> so that that should be taught to everyone and that if it is good, like, you know, physically as well. There's sort of hard style qigong that, um, you know, like uh, gong fu monks would use. But uh, if you were looking for something more physical, then I would suggest to do kung fu because kung that's fu. the more mm. like, you know, yeah. hard martial style. And then qigong can help to make um, your martial skills more powerful. So instead of just using the muscular, like, you know, force and tension that actually you have something deeper within you that makes you more powerful than what your muscles can provide. 